Hi, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, so it is an honor to be here. Uh, my name is Jose Marin, and for the next 20 minutes, more or less, uh, I will be taking you to, into a journey of uh, a slightly uncharted territory. Um, we're going to explore the powerful marriage between two seemingly different worlds, the world of rigorous, um, complex scientific simulations, and the beautiful, boundless, creative universe of Blender. And the result of this marriage is Silent, a project about forging the ultimate workflow for advanced data visualization inside of Blender. So let's begin. Yeah, so a little bit about me. I'm Jose, and I come from the, city, the sunny city of Valencia in Spain. By trade, I'm a mathematician, yeah, and a software developer at Comlat uh, at, the Valencia, at the University of Valencia, where we build tools for complex simulations. Uh, my Blender journey starts back in 2017, and like many of you, uh, I was immediately hooked. Uh, but my obsession took a specific turn. Uh, I became fascinated with a scientific visualization. How, we can how can we take raw, abstract numbers and turn them into something that is beautiful, uh, insightful, and generally uh, compelling? That question is what led me here. So let's start with the foundation of, of science, uh, data. As scientists and, in as in and engineers, we are data-generated machines. Uh, we're on mass and simulations. Um, uh, computational fluid dynamics, uh, finite element analysis, climate models, and they produce terabytes upon terabytes of files. Uh, we absolutely love our data. Our story starts its life as a humble file on a hard drive. Yeah. And then when you peek inside, you see this. It's uh, beautiful, right? Isn't it? No, just me? OK. Yeah. Uh, this is. Uh, yeah, this is a VTK file, which stands for uh, Visualization Toolkit. Uh, it's a cornerstone of scientific um, computing world. It's a structure, powerful, but let's face it, um, very an artistic way of describing uh, a simulated world, right? Yeah, OK. It contains everything. First, uh, the skeleton of the world, uh, the geometry and topology. This defines the fundamental, the fundamental shapes, the vertices, the lines, the triangles, but also the volumetric data, uh, like tetrahedra or hexahedra. Then we have the attributes, uh, scalars like pressure or temperature, vectors like velocity fields, even tensors that describe stress and strain. Let's say that this is the science. Okay? And it doesn't stop here. Uh, we have metadata, temporal information for animations, and so on. It's rich, but also very complex, digital representation of physical phenomenon. So the question is, how do we make any sense of it? So we visualize it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, scientific communication and scientific visualization. Um, we turn that mountain of numbers into an image that tells a story. Yeah, uh, the classic uh, scientific visualization pipeline, famously outlined by, ha by Haber and McNabb, uh, looks like this. You have a reader that parses the data file and reads my step uh, where you filter or derive new data. And finally, a mapping stage uh, where, you, you're, when you're, um, where, <laughs> where you map uh, data values to visual properties like color, geometry, or opacity. And for many years, uh, the indisputed champion of this pipeline has been Paraview. It's an open source Titan. It can chew through hundreds of gigabytes of data without breaking a sweat. Uh, and it has, uh, also has a library of scientific filters that it's second to none. And in the lab I'm currently working at, uh, this is why I started using it when I joined it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and there is a perfect synergy between Paraview and scientific data. It is the gold standard for uh, scientific analysis, uh, and they made it really easy. And, ca and Paraview can produce um, this sort of renders. Uh, I mean, they are functional. Yeah, they are scientifically accurate as well. Uh, they are, let's say, fine. Um, but we are the Blender conference, uh, so um, we want wow, right? We want wow. Uh, and achieving wow in a traditional scientific tool is, frankly, a nightmare. <laughs> the lighting bottles are basic, the camera controls are clunky, and achieving photorealism is a constant uphill battle. Uh, let me show you a very clear example. Here we have the Stanford Bunny mesh. Uh, you're probably familiar with that. Um, on the left, a path trace is rendered from Paraview. On the right, a path trace is rendered from Blender. Same geometry, same concept, but look at the light. Uh, look at the caustics. Um, cycles render engine 
isn't just much better. It's, a completely, it's in a completely different league. Which brings us to the multi-million dollar, dollar question. Uh, we have this phenomenal scientific analysis tool and this phenomenal artistic uh, rendering tool. Why are they separate? Uh, why can't we bring our scientific data directly into the artistic powerhouse that is Blender? How? <laughs> how, do we bridge that? Uh, how, do we, how do we build that bridge? Well, it turns out I wasn't uh, the first person to ask, to ask this. I went digging, uh, and I felt like Indiana Jones uh, when I unearthed this forum post from um, yeah, uh, June 2008, uh, more than 17 years ago, um, asking for the future, uh, this future. Uh, in June 2008, I was 10 years old, like 9 years old. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, the key was a recent the awesome development in Blender. Uh, and shout out to Lars, I think it's in the public. Yeah, here it is. Because uh, he, so, he showed me this thing. Um, yeah, Python wheels inside of Blender. Um, for the non-developers in the, in the room, this means we can now easily install powerful pre-compiled Python libraries, the same ones used in the scientific world, directly into Blender. Uh, this means that we can finally give Blender uh, the scientific brain it deserves. And using that power, I built the bridge. Uh, this is silent, an add-on designed uh, for, to connect scientific data sets directly to Blender power, how, uh, powerful uh, rendering and, and animation uh, tool sets. So I will show you a quick demo. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, this project goes beyond just being a tool. Uh, we've collaborated with amazing researchers uh, from multiple institu institutions, uh, such as Imperial College of London, King College of London, the University, the University of Edinburgh, the Alan Turing Institute. Um, and they helped us to validate these workflows, and we have published these findings. Um, if you're interested in the deep technical details, you can scan the QR code. Yeah, it's awesome. So how does this magic work? Um, Cybern lives right in your Blender sidebar, organized into a series of logical panels. Let's start at the beginning, getting the data into um, Blender. So the advanced core is the engine of, Blender, uh, of Cybern. It's a custom built importer that speaks the language of science. It natively understands formats like BTK, NetCDF for meteorological and oceanographical data, and GIS shapefiles. It doesn't just import a mesh, it imports the entire data set, the geometry, the topology, and all that rich scientific attribute data. And here's the most critical step. Silent acts as a universal translator. It takes the abstract scientific concepts of cells and points and transforms them into language that Blender speaks, vertices, edges, and faces. It can even process uh, complex volumetric uh, meshes, extracting a renderable surface that Blender can use immediately. This is the secret sauce. Yeah, and it's ridiculously fast. Uh, we benchmark um, silent against other lean tools. You know, this, this is something you have to do when you're writing a paper, you know, because then reviewers tell you that it's not scientific enough. So yeah, um, it's super fast, OK, let's see. And here we have an example of some data imported with Silent. On the left, we have a global climate uh, data from Copernicus dataset, imported from NetCDF uh, and spherically projected. By the way, the spherical filter is also available uh, in, Silent, in Silent, so you can actually um, transform your data into something spherical. Uh, on the right, a detailed topographic landscape imported from a shapefile. Good. OK. The data is in, it's fast. Now for the fun part, um, making it look good. 
we need to map our scientific values to color. Yeah. In Blender, that means building a shader node tree, uh, which can be tedious. So we automated it. Uh, Silent Shader Generator reads standard scientific color maps files from uh, JSON. So we parses, uh, it parses it. Uses NumPy for high speed interpolations and build entire ready to use shader node tree with a single click. You can see here how a material is instantly generated from the data set. And with the, this volume simulation, swapping between different perceptually uniform color maps is instantaneous. And the data range is automatically adapted according to the attributes selected. Isn't that cool? Yes. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Some more examples of different attributes visualization. Um, even though I, really, I don't really like football, this visualization makes me like it a little bit more. <laughs> Yeah, that's so dope. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what scientific plot without a lane? Um, some might ask. Um, creating one manually in Blender is a painful process of aligning texts and objects. It's awful. So we automated that too. Um, the layer generator uses Matplotlib to render a layer as a PNG transparency, and then automatically composites it over your final render and viewport by using our amazing GPU uh, compositor. Uh, you get full control over fonts, colors, and layout with zero manual effort. That's, on, that's a car, a cool car with uh, some windy thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Now it automatically, automatically generates in, the new, in, the, in our new version. So yeah, you just change your shader, and it automatically updates the layer. That's cool. Uh, by the same principle, we can stack multiple PNGs, not only legends, and composite our 2D infographics very easily with another module called Shapes Generator. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> yeah, and to complete the storytelling uh, story toolkit, we also added Grid and Node Generator uh, to provide clear spat spatial context to your visualizations with 3D infographics. It is all, all about making Blender a uh, one-stop shop uh, for scientific communication, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, OK, uh, you know, science, uh, scientists uh, really have uh, difficulty uh, with rendering. Um, of course, uh, I did something for them. Oh. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, so I also, mo I also made a module called Compositor. So scientists also have an easy way of compositing shots. It has a camera manager, easy predefined formats for printing and cinema, and a very easy to use interface. Yeah, it automatically, automatically generates the keyframes for the cameras as well. Uh, I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of uh, where Silent is today. Um, we're, we're just getting started, to be honest. Um, we have some major features coming very soon. The next frontier for us is true volume rendering of simulations in real time. Yeah. yeah. This is great. Um, we're building a direct pipeline to convert volumetric grid data from Paraview into the industry standard open BDB format. This will allow you to render simulations like thermodynamics, medical scans, fluid simulations directly into Blender. Yep. So you're, but you're, what you're basically doing here is um, grabbing that um, geometry and topology, turning it into a um, uniform grid uh, layer, and then turning that into something that uh, Blender can read. I also recognize that Blender uh, can be intimidating for users coming from a purely scientific background. Um, the learning curve is real. So that's why I'm also developing a complete series of tutorials and courses specifically for scientists and engineers designed to make the translation, uh, the trans um, the transition painless. And with that being said, let's roll one final tip. OK? Do you like my tips? So I'm going to show one more. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Uh, what can I say? Uh, Cyberlin is more than an add-on. It's a bridge. It's a philosophy that believes in science communication, um, that science communication deserves the same powerful artistic tools that filmmakers and game developers have enjoyed over the years. It's about saving researchers countless hours and helping them to share their incredible work with the world in a way that is clear, effective, and beautiful. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Um, you can connect me, contact with me in LinkedIn, also uh, GitHub. And you can also find Silent in the extension of uh, thanks to Thanks to Nika, Nika the, the extension guy. Uh, he did a great, amazing support, so I'm super, ha I'm super happy uh, to have him. And I'll be around the um, talk to answer any questions and enjoy the rest of the weekend. I want to also give a quick, sh quick shout out to my parents, to my, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they even, they even yeah, they even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also um, to my friends, of course, uh, to my best friend Antonio, who's uh, doing a great job, and also to my beautiful girlfriend, uh, Leah. Uh, I love you, baby. And, <laughs> and thank you so much. You're the best. Uh, and I, do you mind if I take a quick selfie with you? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hands up. Uh, this, is not a, this is not a robbery, OK? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I have it in my phone. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You guys rock. Thank you. <laughs>